This is probably the most misunderstood scripture passage in the whole Bible. That might be an exaggeration, but not if it is, not by much. It's probably the most misunderstood, misinterpreted scripture passage in the whole Bible about the good shepherd. Jesus asks a question. He doesn't make an indicative statement. He doesn't make a statement for us English, for you English majors who may be in the congregation. He doesn't make a statement. He does not say, the good shepherd leaves the 99 in the desert and goes to search for the one lost one. It's not a statement of fact. Jesus asks a question. What man, what man among you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them would not leave the 99 in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? Question mark. He's asking a question. The answer is how many shepherds would go after the one and leave the 99 alone in the desert? The answer to that is zero. Zero many would do that. It makes absolutely no sense. And the people listening to Jesus knew that. They knew that it would make no sense. Any shepherds listening to him, what man among you having 100 sheep and losing one of them would not leave the 99 alone and go look for the lost one? Nobody in their right mind would do that. You leave the 99 unattended and you go look for the one if you happen to find it in one piece and come back, what are you going to find? Nothing. The sheep would scatter. Wolves would come and eat them. Thieves would come and steal them. It makes absolutely no sense. The answer to the question is how many shepherds would do that? The answer to the question is zero. There's no shepherd in his right mind that would do that. You would lose. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense to the people listening to Jesus. It would make no sense to any shepherd who knew anything about shepherding. It would make no sense to anybody except... the one lost sheep. You and I are the one lost sheep. You and I, the one lost sheep is hoping against hope that the shepherd throws conventional wisdom out the window and comes and saves me. Right? If you and I are that one wandering sheep that wandered off, we're hoping that our shepherd throws out conventional wisdom, comes and looks for us, for me, before the wolf and the thief, or before I fall into a ditch. It makes sense to nobody except the one lost sheep. And that's what God does for each one of us. Throws conventional wisdom out the window, seeks us, finds us, and brings us back. It's the most mis misunderstood, because everybody thinks, oh, what a wonderful shepherd. Oh, the shepherds in Jesus' day must have been very selfless, very very giving, very compassionate for that one wandering sheep. That wandering sheep was a write-off. <laughs> but not for God. Not for our God. Our God will seek, throw out conventional wisdom, seek us and find us. I, my best friend in high school felt that God had it out for him. So he never went to church not even sure what religion he was, because at the time I wasn't going to church <laughs> as a teenager. But he, I didn't feel like God had it out for me, but he felt like God had it out for him. God does not have it out for us. As a matter of fact, the, the scripture, even St. Paul in that uh, second reading, Jesus came to save sinners of wh whom I am the first. Jesus came to save us to seek out and save us, not condemn us. He don't have it out for us. He wants us to come back to him. And if we're not, he's coming to look for us. Even uh, later in, in that scripture, I tell you in just the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. There's more joy in heaven when you and I come back to the Lord than over 99 that people that didn't need to repent. God does not have it out for us. God wants us to be saved. We are that one lost sheep that God will always seek out.